The value of one high-profile Russian export plunged this week as sponsors distanced themselves from tennis star Maria Sharapova. Fortunately, the value of another Russian export looks as though it may have stabilised. Brent crude topped $40 a barrel for the first time this year on Monday, and that can only help the Russian stock market, which is highly correlated with hydrocarbon prices. Russian shares have now more than recovered their January losses and are among the best performers so far this year in emerging markets. Not that Ms Sharapova, who lives in California, is going to derive much benefit. What matters to her, and indeed most other investors, are the returns in dollars or euros, not in rubles. This chart shows the returns on the RTS index since the tensions with the Ukraine began in 2014. In ruble terms, the green line, investors are still just about ahead over the past two years. But in euro terms, they are down, and in dollar terms, they're down even more. Equity gains have been more than cancelled out by the decline in the currency. At the start of 2014, a dollar bought 35 rubles. Now it will buy 71. In a sense, this capitulation is to be applauded. Russia chose not to waste billions of dollars defending its currency, only to then eventually admit defeat and point angry fingers at speculators. It has instead allowed the ruble to become the safety valve for the economy. But at a cost. The cost of imports has risen, pushing inflation into double figures. Real wages have been crushed and consumers have retrenched. Yet Russians are stoical and resourceful in the face of adversity, and the country is politically stable. President Vladimir Putin is not going to go the way of Suharto, the Indonesian strongman who was toppled in the wake of the Asian crisis. Some equity fund managers are now talking about increasing their weightings to Russia. And as well they might. This chart shows two key equity valuation metrics. The price to earnings ratio, the red line on the left scale, and the price to book ratio, the blue line on the right scale. On both measures, Russian shares are not quite the bargains they were here towards the end of 2014, but they are still cheap. In Brazil, another commodity-heavy emerging market, both price to earnings and price to book are virtually double these levels. Now some level of discount is appropriate given Russian companies' patchy corporate governance. And would-be investors would probably like some assurance that the currency isn't about to take another lurch lower. And some reassurance is available. Bond and credit default swap markets are not obviously telegraphing deeper distress. The cost of insuring Russian five-year debt has halved since its peak in late 2014. So it looks as though investors may finally be cutting the country some slack. Maria Sharapova must be hoping that tennis bureaucrats do the same for her.